Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. This is the third video in my series for composting for 2020. Please subscribe. I'll be doing more videos on this. Now, it's been 120 days since the last video, and in that video I said the key is to really get started. So if you got started 120 days ago, you may have some compost ready or you're going to have it for next year. We'll go over these different bins because I've made some changes. My goal was to have compost 90 days later, and in that previous video, you saw a nice pile of stuff here. It was uh, debris from the garden from the end of last year, from spring, some layers of grass in there. It all broke down nicely. I'll show you that pile. I even restarted it. Been using that as about 90 days ago, so my goal worked. I got compost. And then you continue down, and I have uh, different kind of stations going. I'll explain that, talk to you about the different successes and things that I've changed up. Now, most importantly, you have carbons. I'm using straw now. You can use cardboard, you can use leaves. Those are the easiest things to get. So you have your browns or your carbons. I'm using grass as my nitrogen. You know, fresh uh, leaves from a tree when they're green, that's a nitrogen. Weeds that are pulled, that's a nitrogen. So you're mixing browns, carbons, and greens, nitrogens. So this is a hot composting area. I'm not trying to get compost, like I mentioned in a previous video, in 30 days, but I want to break it down pretty quickly so that the process is started 90 days, 120 days later, I have compost. This is cooking at over, let's see if that'll come in, 150 degrees. It's into the uh, red. This was started yesterday. I highly recommend straw as a layer. Now, cardboard is free you can collect it right over there is a bale of straw if you go to a farm you go to a farm store you can get bales of straw you don't want hay because they have weed seeds in it but you want straw for five bucks why is that important at home depot it's going to cost you about 12. one bale of hay yesterday i'm sorry straw yesterday set up this pile that's cooking at 150 degrees. This pile that I have a tarp on, I'll explain that in a second. Set up the bedding there and got that pile started. So five bucks spread out all over here. That's a pretty good deal. The grass is free. So in the last video, I talked about doing layers. That's what you want to do. And I think I said you could do four to six inches of grass. I'm changing that to a thumb. I'll explain that in a second. Realistically, four inches of grass is great. If you go higher than that, it can kind of get uh, matted down and smelly and breaks down more slowly. So about four inches of grass if you're doing it that way. There's not an exact measure. That's why I use a thumb. It's like some people say it's two to one ratio of green to brown, two to one ratio of brown to green, and you can get really lost in all that. So what I did, one thumb of grass. So you just put down enough grass that covers your thumb. And if you do it that way, then it's a half a thumb of straw or a half a thumb of shredded brown leaves or a half a thumb of shredded up cardboard. If you want to do two thumbs of grass, that's fine. Then it would be one thumb of your browns. And that's just a nice quick way to measure. You can just use your thumb, measure real quickly, and it sets it up. And again, you know, I wish that would come in. Let's see. It's going at 150 degrees from yesterday. The next video will show the progression of this. As this heats up and breaks down, it's gonna drop by at least half, but it gets moved on to different parts of my station. This is cold composting. Everything down in the bottom is probably ready to go out into the garden beds this year. I may leave it there a little bit longer. Worms are getting in there. I'm getting worm castings under there. I put the wood down to keep the castings and the good stuff on the wood surface. This has been filled from last year, from this year, uh, maybe at the most, again, four inches of green grass clippings if you want to throw some in there, but it just gets all my debris. This has been filled up to here several times, and it keeps dropping down. This is also going to be a great source of browns. As this all dries out, it goes from the nitrogen-rich greens to browns, and then I can mix this brown with grass clippings that I harvest sort of over the years. So this could be just your browns resource, but it's also making nice compost down at the bottom the longer it sits. So I'm using the layers here. One of the things that I learned that I really struggled with the most was moisture. I did put 
these tops on, which is important. During the summer, it's not so bad because it rains, it's hot, it dries out quickly. But as the fall comes or in the spring, if this is getting soaked with rain, it really weighs it down. You don't want your compost pile uh, sopping wet, soaking wet. But I didn't keep them moist enough, basically. I need to bring a hose over, spray them down. The solution is really a tarp. This is the same exact setup, but I've put a tarp over this. This will keep all the moisture in and you know a lot of people recommend that it makes sense and it breaks down a lot more quickly over here is where i had that pile of debris and grass and layers not set up you know perfectly rotating or anything like that just a pile sitting on there i wet it down and i put these tarps over it all of this has been used and this is what i got about 90 days later you can check out the other video um, for may and you will see the pile in there and these tarps are pretty cheap and this is all the good stuff you know some of the stuff is still big but when you get down to here you have great compost for your garden so success not a lot of work put on the pile put on the tarps made sure there was some fresh greens in there it's doing its thing i'm going to rinse and repeat that this is another pile of what i just talked about this is where i was working with the um, cardboard and the grass. The key with the cardboard is you really have to break it down into smaller pieces. I mean, you want something like shredded leaves or hay like this. I mean, it's just really nice stuff for the microbes to break it down. So if you can get hay, that'd be fine. I'm gonna be using cardboard on the bottom of my uh, compost bins. The worms like it, it's a nice way to set it up. I will still shred it up. And this was, you know, the green grass and the cardboard. You can see um, the different fungi on there and stuff in the breakdown. And the biggest problem was that, and you can see that that's a little bit thick, is six inches of grass was a little bit too much or I needed more of the browns, a thicker layer. So the thumb me method is what I've been kind of working with. Again, thumb height of green a half of brown or two thumbs of green one thumb of brown that will work for any size thumb because your ratio is going to stay the same so that original stuff has been moved over to here and I'm just adding in new materials and kind of you can see the process of how it's breaking down here and I'll just let that go you know that's some cardboard that hasn't broken down but it's going pretty well. It's somewhat warm. The key is, is if you're putting the cover on top, make sure this stays moist. And this is sort of a couple of things going on. I have way at the end, which is perfectly fine. You can do that. Just a pen, a four foot by four foot pen, layering your stuff. I've got two piles here that I kind of break down with kind of the hot composting. And that, to be honest with you, is going to get thrown into here covered up and I'll let it go and this is a pretty quick process this is going to be about 90 days this is just extra because I built too many of these bins so I'm just gonna let that do its thing and see what happens and then in here I'll be doing different combinations of things but as I get stuff that is mostly broken down maybe 50 75 percent broken down a lot of it will go there but some of it's going to go into this pile and that's just an ongoing experiment this can just break down over time what I didn't like are these barrels they work um, but they don't hold that much you can see that I got some stuff in there I did put in shredded hardwood that's not the best stuff to use um, I've been using stuff out of there but it's sort of a pain because then after you make it you got to reach in with your hands it's not easy to move around pitchfork takes care of all this you can move it to where you want and this is low to the ground, so I'm going to keep these, but I'm going to have to raise them up a little bit. So these are kind of the basic principles for composting. You can pick whatever setup you like, really. Um, it all works. Cold, warm, hot, however you want to do it, you're going to be able to get compost. But again, the key is to really get started. So you might not have the space I have over there. This is also compost. Now, this is heavy layers of grass I just dump it in there um, all kinds of different debris I'm just piling it in there you can see discarded 
fruit waste, uh, vegetable waste, all in there. This will break down over time. I'll be able to use it at some point. But with one acre of grass, and even with that size of the compost station that you just saw, I can't process all of that. So about every other week, I kind of take care of that station. The other stuff gets dumped here or it gets put around my trees and stuff like that. It isn't um, difficult to get a lot of resources to compost down, but it is difficult to have the space to compost it down, if that makes sense. You can find the greens and the browns, um, but you do need a lot of space. So this will be perfectly fine. If you have nothing, just pile all your stuff out somewhere where it stays away from the house and you know, maybe not this year or next year, but a couple years down the line, this will be all broken down and you can come dig it out and use it in your garden. The next video is really going to follow the hot composting over here and watching how it breaks down. In retrospect, I'd like this to be a little bit wider. If your piles can be four feet by four feet and then four or five feet high, maybe a little bit bigger, five feet wide. That's the best pile. It really holds the moisture, really gets the heat. But this works well, you know, and I kind of, kind of like the setup. Don't be discouraged that you have to start something super fancy, build all this stuff. You can get a pen like this, just layer your stuff in, or you can just find a space, and this is what I really wanted to show you in this video, and just throw in your debris, throw in some greens, the nitrogen from the grass will really help things get started. Cover it up with the tarp after you moisten it down lightly and just let it sit there for 90 days. I didn't even really fluff or turn this. After about 90 days I came, I used some of the stuff over here, through the coarser stuff here. I'll cover this back up, use it at the end of this year if I need it, or it's going to be in perfect shape for next spring. The whole idea, I'm going to say it again, is don't worry about being perfect, having to read everything. Just get it started. Your browns, straw, shredded cardboard, shredded leaves, your greens, basically grass. And just one more thing too. The reason for the layering, um, not going with six inches of grass, six inches of grass and brown leaves would be perfectly fine because it already has a mix in there. So when I'm running my tractor mow over different areas, I'm pulling in sticks, shredding them up, leaves. That would be fine at six inches. But if you're getting six inches of pure cut grass, that's too much. It's going to mat down and that's going to smell. So some of the stuff you'll learn is as you're bagging up your grass cuttings, if it has leaves in there, you can make the layer of the greens more because it has, has some brown in there. You could go smaller layers too. You could just do like this much green, this much uh, straw, or browns or you can mix it all together it really doesn't matter the idea is is that you're just getting a good balance of greens and browns it's going to heat up it's going to break down and if you want to keep the heat going throw a tarp on that will help if it begins to smell too much like ammonia you need more straw or browns in there if it cools off you probably need more greens but my goal is is to get this heated up get it to break down and then it's going to be thrown into a pile over here covered up and I'm going to let it go for, you know, about 90 days or so. Thanks for watching. Hope this gives you some ideas of how you can get composting started in your yard. If you don't have a yard, find a friend, find a family member, you know, and talk to them about composting on their property. And that will, um, you know, be a way to really save money because I'm going to be doing a video shortly on organic fertilizers that you buy in the bags and how commercialization has really jacked up the price, fooled us as consumers, and it's just, to me, it's just not okay. Anyway, that'll be my Friday morning ramblings. Get your compost started. You'll be really happy with how much money you save and how well your garden does.